what I have found that's been really helpful is to notice where I am misunderstanding others, where my patience is so thin that it's easier for me to jump to a conclusion and eliminate the opinion from my understanding, eliminate the worthiness of that person having my attention and turn that around and to accept that underneath what they just presented to me is something beautiful I just don't happen to understand. It's the Inspiration Place podcast with artist Miriam Shulman. Welcome to the Inspiration Place podcast, an art world insider podcast for artists by an artist, where each week we go behind the scenes to uncover the perspiration and inspiration behind the art. And now, your host, Miriam Shulman. Well, hey there, my beautiful friend. It is Miriam Shulman here, your curator of inspiration. And we have a bonus episode today. I am so excited to bring on, she's waiting in the wings. I'm going to bring her on in a moment. My friend, Patty Lennon, she will be doing two Oracle card readings that will help you release your anxiety around creating and selling your art. So you're going to get so much out of this episode. Let me give you a little bit of background on Patty. So today's guest is an intuitive business coach. She is an author of the most beautiful book, Make Space for Magic, and she does have her own Oracle card deck. Please welcome to the inspiration place, Patty Lennon. Hi, friend. Hi. Hi. I'm so happy to be here with you. I'm happy to have you here. I wish every podcast was with a friend. I know, but right? The reason I wanted to talk to Patty in this thing is we are less than a month away from our live event in New York City. And Patty is one of the guest speakers. She's talking all about really using the power of magic to break through our anxiety. Mm -hmm. I forget what title we actually gave it, but it's something to that effect. The and, author antidote. Yes, the artist antidote, exactly, so for breaking through anxiety. So what I thought might be super helpful is for you to do a demo with me. Mm, uh, like, yes. Yeah. Okay. So maybe pull some cards and we'll talk about that. Yeah. So for you listening, one of the things to understand is that at the time that we're in, in our planet, we are in an evolution that is going at quite a rapid pace. And whether you believe that or not, you probably feel it. And the feeling is destabilization. And there's lots of magic out there that can help you but accessing the magic requires a conduit, and the conduit is your brain. And if your brain isn't on board, the magic really can't intercede on your behalf. So what does all that mean? What it means is if you're feeling anxiety, which would just mean you're human, we need to find ways to calm the anxiety so that the soul's birthing nature the soul's ability to bring newness to your life, newness to your art, newness to challenges, all of that can only happen if the anxiety is put at ease. And my very favorite way to do that is with Oracle cards. So that just gives you some context to why the Oracle cards. I spent half my life not believing in any of this being completely cynical, not having any access to magic. So I know what it's like to have both sides of that equation. And Oracle cards were my gateway drug. They were the ones that helped me understand because they're real, like they're a piece of paper or cardboard or whatever you want to call it. They've got pictures on it. There's words associated with those pictures and all three of those factors help our brain believe, help our brain access. So for a demo, Miriam, what do you think is the most 
maybe important challenge facing an artist right now where we could kind of do a global reading that would feel relevant? Um, Or what do you think is something that's an ever-present challenge of an artist that it won't matter when they're listening to this podcast that we could give them an access point? Okay, so some of the things that I hear the most, I'm not ready yet. The fear around asking for the sale, which sometimes they recognize as a fear of asking for sale, but oftentimes it's cloaked with a story they've made up in their mind that sounds true. That's why I don't call them excuses. But it really is the fear masquerading as this story, such as, I can't sell art, there's a war. I can't sell art, there's an election. I can't sell Mm -hmm. art, there's a pandemic. I can't ask higher prices because I'm just starting out. That's when I hear a lot. And they really undervalue their, like they're pricing below what Mm -hmm. someone starting out should be pricing their art at. So those are the most common ones that I hear. I'm going to keep talking about some common things. Uh, There's also a lot of the artists in my community, they spin, and this this is probably because of their neurodiversity, that everything feels equally important, so they can't discern what's most important, and that keeps them from taking any action at all because they get overwhelmed because it feels like there's so much. So those are the most common ones that oh, I see. I love that. Okay, so I heard two big themes. One is inability to move forward. Mm-hmm. And then the fear of asking for something in return for the work. Yes. So I love the both those. So we're going to start with the fear of moving forward. Now for you listening, you were like, no, 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 go back to the sale one. That's my big one. That's okay. Because that's really most likely with the sale one, you have a fear of the actual like speaking the price or saying the words, pay me for my work, right? Something like that. So this this reading is still going to apply. So with cards, one thing I see, oracle cards that trip people up is a few things. One is like almost like you have to have a license to buy a deck, right? Like you have to have some kind of permission to use them, which is why for your event, which if you're listening and the event hasn't happened yet, we're gifting everyone a deck. And the reason is that I find sometimes it's easier when a deck is given to you when you're first using cards to feel like it would bestowed upon you. Hey, okay? like there's almost, that's how it worked for me. So it takes out that fear of like having to do something special to acquire it. But once you start working with cards, there's a lot of different ways that you can use them, meaning you can give the number of cards that you lay out. That's called like, you know, just how you're doing a reading. You can give each card a meaning. So you can get a very layered answer to certain challenges. So that's what we're going to do. But we're going to use a really simple what's called spread. So that's the number of cards you put out and the order you put them in. Um, And then even though we're recording this with video and audio, you're probably only hearing the audio. So I'm gonna speak to you the order that the cards are coming in. So a really great reading I like to use is a three card reading. And the first card, the responsibility of the first card is to give you access into what is this challenge about, right? Like, We know we need to move forward. You know you need to move forward, whether it's putting that brush to canvas, whether it's putting that canvas out into the world, or it's actually speaking the price or anywhere in between in that process. What's stopping you? Like, what really is going on here? Miriam said there was a story and maybe you know there's a story. So why are you holding that story, right? Like, why is that story getting in your way? That first card's gonna give you access to what is going on. The second card is going to give you access to advice. And to me, this is what most people are looking for in cards. So the spirit world or your higher consciousness, depending on how you see it, is going to give you advice on how to overcome that challenge. The final card, and this is why I love this spread, is going to be the outcome. 
But there's a caveat to the outcome, which is the outcome if you follow the advice. And the reason I love that is for two reasons. One, a lot of us, myself included, want to believe that there's a guaranteed outcome, that there's some destiny or predestiny when we feel overwhelmed and confused. That's actually a trauma response. When we get challenged and overwhelmed, we can handle it in a healthy way or an unhealthy way. And the unhealthy way is when we start to respond to it the way we learn to respond to early childhood traumas. Whether you had a magical childhood or a terrible one or whatever, at some point you had some shitty things happen to you when you felt powerless and you had coping mechanisms, right? And that's that's typically how we jump in when things get really overwhelming. That's why we like someone else to tell us the answer. That's actually part of that fight or flight response that most people don't talk about. And it's called fawn. We're looking for a leader. We're looking for someone smarter than us. We're looking for someone better than us. And I'm highlighting that because as an artist, you may be thinking, well, Miriam's so experienced. That's why she can do it. Or this other artist has been out there selling longer or blah or blah, blah, blah. And that's just a variation of that fawn story. So this reading, when you say there's a third card and it's an outcome, it's reminding you that you have choice. It's reminding you that you have power, that when you get to that second card and it gives you advice, you have a choice to follow it or not. And the spirit world, and this took me years to really get, doesn't have an opinion on whether you follow the advice or not. It wants the best for you and it also honors free will. And if you choose not to follow the advice, you can still go back to the information well, to the inspiration well, to the metaphysical well and ask for more help and shake it off. I see the advice. The advice is telling me to be bold. I don't feel safe to be bold. Give me something else. So, This card spread is really simple and also leaves room for free will and leaves room to remind you that if you get information about the outcome, but you don't take the necessary action, you aren't going to have the outcome that is promised to you. Okay. I just want to say something because I'm really happy you mentioned free will. So For those who are new to Patty, she's from a Catholic background. And for those who may not know, I'm from a Jewish background. And the Judeo-Christian faith actually does believe both in the concept of predetermination coupled with Mm -hmm. free will. So that things are, for example, that you have an amount, if we can talk about business, if you, you have an amount of money that you can earn but only if you use your free will to get there, as an example. I also wanted to bring this up because sometimes I get, I have in the past, not recently, gotten pushback when I talk about spirits and things like that. And people says, well, I believe in Jesus and I believe in Christ or I believe in whatever it is you believe, that this is not in contradiction to any of those faiths, that the divine is whatever it is that you believe in. Yes. Including if you're an atheist and you, That's right. this, is a, this is a singular experience with a start and finish line. And if you are, then you can really lean into the Jungian approach that we have these archetypes that exist within us, which I believe as well, and that those archetypes guide us or control us and all of this. So it can be applied to any level. And Like I said, I was very cynical. You know, yes, my background is I'm Catholic, but I had already left the church when I started exploring this. I already had a master's in psychology. I was a banker. I was in the financial world for years and years and years. And the the reason I keep going back to Oracle cards when I work with any group is because I can meet you on any level. I can tell you why they work from a financial systems level. I can tell you why they work from a brain science level. You don't have to believe in the metaphysical aspects. If you do, though, if you do believe there is a metaphysical force, whether it's God or a group of divine beings or your higher self, then what I want you to understand about these cards is the cards are not 
God. The cards are not divine, right? The cards are, they're a conduit. It's like a telephone line. That's all they are. They have no power other than the power of being a point of communication. So now that we've gotten all of the small print <laughs> of the way, we're going to pick three cards. And one of the questions I get is like, how do you shuffle the cards? And the answer is whatever way you want, whatever way. You could shuffle them like a pack of cards. I shuffle them where I just sort of um, let them pass over each other and fall into each other, which is, um, I'm going to do it on the video in case you end up using the video, but it's no, no big deal. It looks like a very normal way to shuffle cards. You could spread them out on a sheet of paper, you know, on like a table and push them all together, whatever it is. There's no right way to shuffle the cards, but you shuffle the cards. That's really just a way of you kind of connecting to them. And then we're going to pull three cards. And you can pull right from the top of the deck. I sand them out in front of me and pick the ones that my eyes fall on. But the first card goes to the left. The second card is in the middle position. And sometimes I'll pause and I'll hesitate because there's a couple of cards calling my attention. So I'm just waiting for them to tell me which one wants to be there. And then the third card is going to go to the immediate right. So you've got three cards in a row is how you have them set up. And if we are using the video, I'll just show you that we've got card number one, card number two, and card number three right here. That's how they're laid out. All right. So now, drum roll, we're going to turn them over. So what we've got for our first card that's going to give us information on our challenge is the animal ally card. What I love about cards that are built like my deck, which is the one we're using right now, the Space for Magic deck, is this deck is built so it leaves a lot of room for meaning and interpretation. There's a guidebook that goes with it that'll give you a very specific meaning but I always encourage people, and this is something we're going to be doing at Miriam's event, to use the power of your own artistic intuition to get the full meaning for yourself. So the image on the card is a wolf. And then the words are animal ally. And the animal ally stands for a couple of things. It is the fact that all of us can have animals that come into our lives that give us information. You might be seeing a particular animal over and over again, and every single animal holds an energy system. And what that means is that an individual wolf holds the energy system of the whole species of wolf. So there's the wolf as spirit and then individual wolves, right? And they all can carry to you a message. You could see a picture of a wolf. You could see you know, someone saying the word wolf, you could see it in the title of a book, or you could just have that word coming to your mind. That could be it. But in this card, the wolf is appearing, but you could actually be connecting to a different animal, and that's perfectly fine. It could be the words animal ally that is really calling your attention. But I'm going to read this the way I read it, which is what I mean is I look at the card and I really ask what is being called forth here. And the energy of wool is the ability to be an independent spirit and also participate in the pack, participate in the community. It's about being able to follow your intuition, even if it's taking you somewhere that the rest of the pack doesn't agree with, and yet still know you have a right and a place in your community. So there isn't a risk of being thrown out of your community. And that to me is the message coming through that the challenge is that you're afraid to honor what you know to be true because you're afraid of being thrown out of your community in some way, shape, or form. Means maybe you're afraid of being judged, being considered too crazy, too weird, or maybe something that you would make that really would come from like the depths of your artistic soul would not be appreciated by potential buyers, right? So that's the challenge. The challenge is you are struggling to pay attention to your intuition and to trust it's taking you someplace safe and not going to get you rejected. So that's the challenge. So what's the advice we're being given? Oh, the nourishment card. 
Oh, 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 I love this so much. And the picture on the card is a watering can, watering a very, very, very new bright green plant. And to me, that is saying the most important thing you can do for yourself is to nourish yourself and most especially nourish that artistic vision, nourish the inner artist. What does your your inner artistic intuition need? Does it need rest? Does it need color? Does it need to be exposed to other visual elements or audio elements or sensory elements that feel nourishing? Is it, we're here, Miriam and I are both here in the North, so I can tell you part of nourishment is just having warm liquids right now because it is so dang cold, right? It can be anything. And then most especially nourishing words. What do you need to hear? What do you need to hear from your own mind to really strengthen that you have what it takes to move forward? So that's the advice is to nourish yourself. So what is the outcome if you do nourish yourself? Okay, so we have this beautiful calm lake. The word is stillness on the card. It's this beautiful mountain lake image and the front of a canoe. So it's the, it looks as if you're sitting in a canoe on a still lake. And I don't actually get the feeling that the outcome is that you'll be still. It's that your your anxiety will be still. Your fear will be still. The things that are making things feel like rough waters for you right now will be stilled. So again, the overall message is the challenge you're having is really honoring your fear and trusting that what you want to do is not going to get you rejected. The advice is to nourish yourself. And if you do, you'll achieve that state of peace and calm and love and beauty that allows you to bring forth your work. Okay, Miriam, where do we go from there? I don't know. I don't know that you can see that I'm like starting to tear up and get Aww. emotional. I'm not sure how much I want to share right now because this is this is for my listeners. But um, what you just said spoke directly to me. If you're an artist craving that in-person spark, then come to New York City this April for the Artpreneur Experience. Listen to what artists had to say about their transformation. There's power in being able to share focused time together with other artists and to be able to slow down to think about being an entrepreneur. Attending Miriam's New York City Mastermind event boosted my confidence in building and sustaining a successful art business. I walked away with some clear next steps and a sense of camaraderie and that a possibility that I, I didn't have going in. Artpreneur Live Experience is happening April 4th, 2024 in New York City, and you don't want to miss it. To secure your spot, head on over to shulmanart.com forward slash IRL or check the link in the show notes. And now back to the inspiration place. Okay, I will share anyway. I guess yeah. I have to. So um, Patty, some, Patty knows a little bit about this, but I haven't talked about it on the podcast. Um, since October 7th, we've seen such a rise in anti-Semitism and I just have such a fear of showing up and being canceled for who I am. And everything you just said to me spoke directly to all of my fears. And I just thank you so much, Patty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's such, I mean, I'm tearing up right now as well. I'm going off the reading. I'm just saying something from my heart, something that's coming through is um, directly to you and your audience is there's a particular responsibility of artists in the time that we're in. And I don't want that to feel like weight at all. It's not meant to be. It's that before we lived in this industrial age, we lived in tribes. And in the tribe, every person in the tribe had a role. And your role helped feed all the other roles and all the other people. And artists are 
those that can express what can't be expressed in everyday life. And when we, as people, are conflicted like we are right now, because what is happening in Israel is one, is one example of what is happening in many places. We are becoming more and more polarized as humanity, and art is the one place where that polarization can be released from the mind. Because when we, when we consume art, whether it's visual art or books or music, it lights up the part of our brain that can actually access solutions that don't look like hate and don't look like fear and don't look like anxiety. And if there was ever going to be a time when art was important in our lifetime, I truly believe it's right now. And for you, Miriam, specifically, for you to be experiencing the level of anti-you is what you're experiencing coming at you. It hurts my heart so much. And I think it's important for every person to know where they need to land inside this polarization that we you're experiencing because the antidote to to fear or hate or violence, which are just variations of fear, is love. It's always love. Nourishment is still the answer. It's still the advice because, you know, what spills out of us is just what's inside of us. And for each of you listening, we'll go back to the core of what this originally was about, which is your fear to move forward. But I think that fear of cancellation is is really a big one for artists. Oh, it is. And, Not just for me personally. Yeah. And it feels so strange to me to be on the other side of this conversation is because I'm usually the one pushing others to be authentic. And like Miriam of a year ago, would not recognize Miriam of today saying these words because that was never a problem for me in the past. You know, I've, I've shown up in ways that I know that not everybody likes, but because I am getting attacked and it's been almost on a daily basis, we're deleting messages from YouTube, Instagram, my email inbox. So it's like to feel that the level of attack, it's very hard to be on the other side of it. However, I've heard so many times from other artists how they're afraid to be themselves, which is why I wrote that whole chapter in my book, Embrace Your Inner Weirdo. It's all about showing up in the most authentic way possible. And yet here I am feeling that fear that it's a new fear for me. That I know that I know that many artists are afraid to be bold, to be who they are for for a multitude of reasons. Yeah. And probably reasons that feel incredibly valid because people have given words, whether in your case it's the emails you're getting, the messages you're getting. For another artist that's listening, it may be the message you got from your father or your mother or friends, you know, as you were growing up. Uh, For people who my artists, the artists in my community who are part of the LGBTQ community, they're getting messages that they shouldn't even exist, let alone their art. It's a lot. There are things you're going to create that people aren't going to like. But we have gotten to a place as a society where we are looking to misunderstand others. and. If you have been persistently misunderstood, it's a cruelty and it's it's a soul killer at a level that I don't even think I could probably understand. But because I have done always so much to be accepted and be approved of, right? So I, I am not of a minority. I am not a religious background that is regularly persecuted, right? I'm not an artist like you all are, although Miriam is... Always good to tell me I am an artist in my own right. So take what I have to share with you with that context. But what I have found that my work in this that's been really helpful is to notice where I am misunderstanding others. 
where my patience is so thin that it's easier for me to jump to a conclusion and eliminate the opinion from my understanding, eliminate the worthiness of that person having my attention and turn that around and not try to understand them necessarily because that can be exhausting too, but to accept that underneath what they just presented to me is something beautiful I just don't happen to understand. So I offer that only as a possibility of maybe some of that nourishment is not just for us to nourish ourselves, but to nourish the information we're receiving. What was our second question? Let's just move ahead to the next card reading. So the second is, how do you ask for the sale, right? How do you ask for the sale? Which really at its heart is, how do you own that what you do has value? That's really what's underneath it. Whenever anyone has problems with sales, it comes down to, do I have the right? to say I'm worthy. Mm. There's never anything else there, right? Like you might have an explanation. I would have the right to charge. I'm too new. I don't live in a community where people pay those prices. I, right. It could be all those things. I just want to point out, those are all the stories you're telling yourself that may or may not be true. So like, cause you don't, you're not coming up with the message on the top surface level of awareness I'm afraid to ask a sale because I don't feel worthy. You're probably telling yourself any number of these other things. Yes, yes, good point. So you may not understand that it's about worthiness, but I I am going to tell you it is about worthiness because I can tell you that I've spent many, many years training people in sales, both in the banking industry and the entrepreneurial industry. And I've used deep work with people and we've tracked it and traced it and it always comes back to worthiness. So you're going to have to give me a little bit of a leap of faith that no matter what the story is that you're using, that it ultimately is a challenge of worthiness. And so for that, we're going to just do a two-card reading, very simple two-card reading, which I'm going to let you decide what those cards mean to you. But when we've got a core issue like worthiness, we can use the cards to just highlight what where we can access this and what we can do with it. So using two cards, it means both cards have equal weight. And rather than tell you what they mean, what I'm going to do is read from the guidebook. So I'm going to tell you what the cards are. I want you to hold your unique sales challenge in your mind. I don't want you to even focus on the worthiness part. Just whatever your sales challenge is in your mind, I'm going to tell you what cards we pulled and then I'm going to read from the guidebook because I want you to see how simple it is without any other intuition to really use these cards to help you and to feel how they calm you. So the first card is right, like W-R-I-T-E, and it's a picture of a notebook, a blank notebook and a pen. And the second card is future self. And it's a picture of a future, present, and past signs, uh, like a signpost. And it's got future pointing one way, present, not pointing any way, and past pointing backwards. So I'm going to read you from the guidebook what these indicate. So the right card says, the page is calling you, which I think you can also say the canvas. (laughs) But sit down and write. The words that sit inside you are meant to be released. Just because you have put pen to paper does not mean you need to share what you have written with anyone else. When the time to share has come, you will know it. For now, just write. If you have been wondering if you are meant to create a book right now, then this card is the answer that you have been looking for. Write. And the future self card. Your future self is a powerful ally in bringing what you most desire to life. They have already walked the path you are on and know where the hidden magic is. Call on your future self for support and guidance on this journey. In the meantime, your future self has a message for you. Everything looks clearer with hindsight. As your future self looks upon you and all you've created, they have one message. You are doing so well. You may not see it or feel it at this time, but you are. 
To call on help from your future self, simply close your eyes and call that version of you to you. Ask any question about your future that you have in your heart and listen with trust as the answer emerges. So this may have been your sign to write a book, but it also may be your sign just to get it out on paper, all the stuff you're thinking. And to call on, and remember, there's a version of you that's already succeeded at this, that already has it all figured out and understood. Or it could mean that you need to write that email to ask for the sale. (gasps) There you go. Or write the price down on the card and put it on a framed picture or canvas. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And that's the thing. Is Yes, I didn't want to put my spin on this because I believe when you were listening, you knew exactly what those words were telling you. Right. That's great. Yes. Right. And and by the way, we do have listeners who aren't just artists with a capital on A. They the many creatives mm. listen to the podcast. Patty, thank you so much for sharing all your beautiful wisdom with us today. So this is an invitation for everyone out there. We do have a few spots left as of this recording to come join us in New York City. Patty will be a speaker. Linnea Floyd will be a speaker. I will be guiding you as well as 11 other artists. We are capping this experience to 12 beautiful souls so that you each can get the attention and nourishing that you deserve. So it's in New York City, April 4th. And to sign up, go to shulmanart.com forward slash IRL, which stands for in real life. Shulmanart.com forward slash IRL. Um, Patty, do you have any last words for the listener before we call this podcast episode complete? Mm, you are a magical spirit in this world. That's it. I love that. All right, my friend, I will see you same time, same place next week. Until then, stay inspired. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Inspiration Place podcast. Connect with us on Facebook at facebook.com slash shulmanart, on Instagram at shulmanart, and of course, on shulmanart.com. 